Well, good morning. And as you can tell by the fact that you probably can't even see my face, it is O-Dark 30, AKA 5.30. And we are headed out of Blackjack Lodge. It was a lovely stay other than the fact that I'm pretty sure there's a karaoke bar that is within spitting distance of the woods here. And they were up partying super late for a super long time last night. So I basically didn't sleep, which means I'm not the happiest camper in the world right now. Also, we're looking for a water source in point one, and it's the only listed water source for pretty much this entire section. And I think we're gonna have to get our headlamps back out because now that we're in the woods, it's dark. But hopefully we'll beat the heat today. Looking forward to another great day of hiking. Well, that's the stream. That's supposed to be our only water source for basically the next two days, and it has a puddle. Yay. So in the chronicles of us getting out of camp, here's what happened. Richie has misplaced his water filter. We don't know where it is. <coughs> um, the stream that was supposed to be the water source for basically this entire section for the next two days, it's a puddle. So we're gonna wait and potentially get something at something that may be a pond outlet because I'm willing to bet it'll at least be flowing. And I just walked into the most massive spider web, spider intact, and it was, deeply traumatizing and I'm not pleased. And now I feel like I'm going to walk into more and it is exceptionally frightening and I'm not having a good morning. I just almost walked into another giant spider web. So now Chris's cowboy is going first because I said I am done. That was it, that was my whole shift. I've earned my trail name again, as I must, every time I'm on trail. And that's it, I'm done. Because you know what? I felt like I got tied up by that spider with this morning and then the giant spider was crawling all over me. And I'm not about that life. And I found another giant, spider, well, two other giant spider webs with the spiders intact. And we knocked them down with our trekking poles, but I can't do it. It's too traumatizing. I'm not a fan of spiders, guys, I'm really not. I know my name is Cowboy Bros, but um, no, I don't do spiders. Especially not that big. There's a bunch of moss in this section of trail, and it's just like this one patch in the middle of this foresty jungle thing. We're walking on a forest service road at the moment. There's actually a lot of forest service road walking in this section. Also, um, Chris's cowboy has really been taking him for the team today. I think he's gone through what, four or five spider webs? Eight spider webs and got a giant spider on him, like the one that I had on me this morning. And um, that means a lot that he would do that for me. Thank you. <laughs> Our first snake. This bridge is like a roller coaster. Lots of up, lots of down, lots of curve, not a lot of straight. It's a titch overgrown. This is why we we're doing tick checks. <laughs> All right, decided to go hood up and exchange the buff out because it's starting to get humid out here. And so far, this is actually cooler than my buff. We'll see how this goes. That thing's huge. So we're just past New Side Trail, mile marker 11, and there are tons of really nice looking places where you could definitely set up a stealth site as long as you don't mind dry camping. So this place definitely has options for camping. Um, theoretically, we're gonna be crossing um, a branch of a pond outlet here in point one, and then we should be at the first shelter in point three. Um, goal is we're gonna stop at that shelter and eat um, because we haven't had breakfast yet. And um, we should be on track to do nine miles by 9 a.m. pulling into that shelter. So that's exciting. 
and then we should only have six and a half more to go for the day so we might end up taking an afternoon siesta we'll see this trail doesn't have a ton of options for places to pull off early and stop for a nap so <laughs> maybe we'll hike through the day done now these boardwalks are incredible look at how long this one is that was taking so much work to put in so thank you to all the trail crews that have worked on this trail because this is amazing all right made it into our breakfast spot nine miles by 9 a.m let's go this shelter is so cute look at the sign and there's hammock posts and nice tent sites metal picnic table fire pit fire ring live in the dream this is tick number two for Chris's cowboy today. Um, so I figured I'd take this opportunity to teach you guys how to use a tick key. So one side is flat, that's this side. Another side is a little bit curved, that's this side. For the smallest ticks, you can use this end of it. And if you wanna magnify your ticks, you can actually tell if it's a tick. There's a magnifier on here. Excuse mine, it's really dirty. <laughs> but put the flat side against your skin and go right for the tick's head when you're trying to do this. Sorry, I moved my camera. And just literally slide the card to pull the tick out. And then of course, double check and make sure there's no tick left, which there is not because this tick key works amazing. And there's your little friend, which you can now squash or throw back in the woods, whatever you're feeling like doing. All right, I have gone full sun shirt mode. Um, my Jolly Gear modeling, love this shirt. And I've added my sun sleeves that so these um, detach, like they're just sleeves and they've got like a little grabber part at the top and a tie so that you can um adjust how tight they're on your arms but these are really nice and i love that it has thumb holes and i've got full sun coverage and this shirt is super breathable also our water situation is no bueno there's no water on this trail and even though the trail is not flooded like it apparently usually is that's not good either because it means we have no water because it's super dry so we're trying to figure out our water situation. We did start the trail packing four liters. I was packing four, he was packing three um, that we had filled up at the Oyster Point campground. And while that would normally be enough, it's in the upper 80s. So we're trying to figure out how to get more water at this point because all of the water sources that we're listed in far out are dry, not a drop there, or any water sources we passed so far have either been brackish puddles or just like brackish looking standing water because that's the problem with this area is a lot of things are coming from a saltwater river and as much as we'd like to drink salt water you can't even filter the salt out of it and it would just make us worse off than we already are so fingers crossed we can find a way to get some fresh water there's a road over there we'll see so you know how i said our water situation was no bueno so we just came out of that road that i heard when I was telling you guys about our water situation and we came out the road and Chris's cowboy is like, there are houses down there. Let's just go knock on a door and see if somebody will let us fill up at their garden hose. And as we're walking down this very busy road, um, we see this gentleman sitting outside his house in his driveway. We went and talked to him. He said, well, I don't have water for you, but my neighbor across the way will probably give you some. Why don't you go ask him? His name's Lee. So we walked over to Lee's house and Lee was out in the garden. It's a great garden, by the way, really beautiful. And we said, hey, you know, we're hiking the MST. Um, you know, the trail that we're on, but the central trail that we're on right now is completely dry. Is there any shot that we could fill up water at your water hose? And he goes, oh yeah, no problem. And so Kristen's Cowboy Talk Gardening with Lee and we were able to fill up all of our water carrying devices. Like I have four and a half liters of water on me right now and Hopefully that will get us through tomorrow because we're dry camping again tonight. Um, and then there's maybe a pond outlet tomorrow, but we're not sure because all the water sources listed on Far Out so far have been D-R-Y. So thank you so much to Lee, who really didn't even know about the trail. Like he's heard of it, never had any involvement with it. And today he turned into a trail angel by giving us water. And I'm so grateful for that. So this trail has an incredible community of people around it and i'm so happy also i think i told you about this but tim found us a place to stay in stella um at a campsite at another trail angel's house um because we were supposed to stay at a campsite a few miles away from stella but we needed a shuttle to get there 
and the trail angel who was going to shuttle us had a deer with her car like three days ago so she does not currently have her trail angel wings as she puts it um so very very grateful for tim finding us this other gentleman um to stay with and now we have a place where we can stay on trail and don't need a shuttle so ah this is just amazing also tim stuffel is the man he is the man um he's a trail angel in segment 15 he always adds the b i don't know what it designates but he will tell you it's 15b and he is an incredible wealth of knowledge and he was able to put me in touch with all of the trail angels that we're using on this segment and he's just bent over backwards to help us um he was an absolutely incredible human and if you guys are out this way hiking this segment definitely get in touch with tim um because he's just like he is the definition of the word trail angel Oh, happy. That's not something you see every day. Thankfully, not the trail. So the trail crosses this random road thingy and there is a residential district right there. We can see people's houses and hear lawnmowers. So we thought this would be a good spot for us to just chill, take a break, eat a snack, drink some water, go up the road to pee. Always a good time. Let me see how hot it is. I always forget I carry a thermometer on my backpack. Okay, thermometer says it's 84, 84 out. And it's only 11.50. Mm pretty sure it only gets hotter from here. Yep, I would say so. But this is what we built an extra time for. Okay, first of all, that tree is huge. Look at that thing. And I feel like we're in the jungle like literally just straight up in the jungle. This is so cool. So the New Siak or New Siak Trail has these mile marker poles with longitude and latitude on them. And then the whole trail is marked by these orange blazes with arrows in them, as well as little metal sheet blazes that they just basically tack right into a tree. So it's really easy to find your way around and the entire trail is 21 miles. So we're on mile 16 out of the 21 right now and we're hoping to finish it up today. All right, we made it to Copperhead Landing Shelter. We are gonna stay here today, but I think we're gonna go farther and find a stealth site. Although this is really pretty. It's right on a lake here. Well, it's lunchtime and it's 88 degrees according to my thermometer and bear in mind this thing is now in the shade um so we are airing out the legs and the feet and eating some lunch downing some electrolytes chris's cowboy's tick count is now up to nine that have latched thankfully i only have one but they are everywhere like they are just crawling everywhere we stopped to unlatch a couple of ticks from his legs and we must have been standing in like a tig nest because I had like four or five crawling on me and he had a bunch more that was trying to hitchhike. Like it's just, this this trail is like really dangerously ticky right now. Um, it's also getting really hot. So we're probably gonna rest up here for a little bit and then um, hike out and do a couple more miles and try to stealth camp somewhere just so we have some miles in the bank for tomorrow. And also, you know, we've got a nice view here. So that's fun. Well, it's three something and we're back in the tick gauntlet again. Um, it took like an hour and a half break at the shelter, which was super nice because it was shade and we got to put our feet up, dry our feet and our socks and our shoes out from sweat and uh, <laughs> Chris's cowboy's tick count is now up to 11 because two more latched him at the shelter. So, you know, love that for him. And I found like four crawling on me. So, you know, we're just out here trying not to get Lyme's disease. Um, I don't know if we're succeeding, 
but it has been a nice trail. Definitely a much needed break to beat some of the heat because it is hot out here, like really hot and muggy and I am soaked in sweat and it's kind of gross, but we are having a good time and it's a beautiful trail. And thankfully we have a little bit of a breeze, which is a godsend. Again, a little overgrown. By a little, I mean a lot. Ow, that was spiny. The trail walks right by this swampy area with all of these beautiful cypress in it. This is incredible. So we just emerged on this absolutely gorgeous beach. This is, uh, this is incredible. And the trail goes that way, so we get to walk on the beach. So we may have missed our turn back onto the MST again because we got distracted by walking along the beach. However, it was a worthwhile side trip that was a lovely breeze and a beautiful spot. Also, if you are through hiking the MST, um, right after you get on the beach, immediately start looking to the right towards the woods for a trail because you get on it again pretty quick. But if you want to take a walk down the beach, it is gorgeous, can confirm, had fun. Sometimes you just have to nail down that really good stealth sight with an ocean breeze and view. Yeah. And enjoy your afternoon. So as soon as we moved into our campsite, Richie goes, you know, I can see you kicking off your shoes and going down and soaking your feet in the water. Um, we're right here on, I think it's the Noose River. And then the idea got stuck in my head that it's hot enough and I've still got enough sunlight left that I can dry off after a swim. So we're going in. That was so much fun. The water was actually a lot warmer than I thought it was gonna be. And now I can just enjoy the breeze on the beach while I try to dry out and have this absolutely incredible view. This was, this was such a good day. This was so much fun. That hit the spot so good. And this is our view for dinner. So I'm not normally a beach person, but this view might make me a beach person. This is such a nice campsite. I went for a dip in the river earlier and it was super warm and really refreshing and I loved it. And it's so nice just listening to the waves, getting a nice breeze, and I think it was a perfect end to the day. We did 17.8 miles on the MST today and we've got 13.1 um, into town tomorrow. So that's exciting, getting town food and resupply and hopefully an actual shower, um, but we did good work today and I definitely think that sitting at the shelter for an hour and a half when it was stupid hot out was definitely a good decision. Um, but yeah, this, this trail is really diverse. I've been enjoying it so far. And uh, tomorrow we should finish the Nusiak Trail um, and start a little bit more of the road walking stuff. So I'm interested to see what tomorrow will hold for now. I'm just gonna enjoy the sunset. Good night everyone.